I'm Chris McCrum from Maastricht University. Falls are an increasing problem in society, but exercise is an effective intervention to prevent falls. Especially exposure to large balance disturbances in safe settings is a promising approach for developing fall resisting skills and reducing falls in daily life. It's been suggested that larger perturbations may lead to greater generalizability of the improvements made uh, and greater locomotor error is one possible mechanism. By this, I mean the mismatch between the predicted movement before a perturbation occurs and the actual movement as a, as a result of the perturbation. In this study, our aim was to investigate the association between initial locomotor error following an unexpected perturbation and subsequent gait adaptation to repeated perturbations. We hypothesized that more initial locomotor error would be associated with greater adaptation following repeated gait, uh, gait perturbations. We measured 30 young and 28 healthy older adults while they walked on a treadmill and experienced 10 treadmill belt acceleration perturbations following the protocol seen in the first figure on the left, with the first perturbing the right leg, then eight consecutive left leg perturbations and ending with another right leg perturbation. We used motion capture to quantify the margin of stability as shown in the formula and schematic on the right, where the difference between the extrapolated center of mass position and the base of support indicates stability or instability. As the data figure from our previous study uh, at the bottom shows, most deviation and stability following these types of perturbations is seen in the first three steps. And for this reason, we quantified locomotor error as the summed absolute difference in the margin of stability during the first three steps following each uh, of the first perturbations to each leg. The figure on the left shows the number of recovery steps needed following the first and last perturbation to each leg. We saw significant improvement following the repeated left leg perturbations. However, this improvement was not significantly associated with the initial locomotor error during the first left leg perturbation as seen in the center figure. The association was also not significant for the right leg as seen on the right figure. In conclusion, we did not find a clear relationship between locomotor error and subsequent improvement following repeated perturbations. And this indicates that the new motor system quantifies error in a more complex manner uh, that is not only dependent on gait stability. Encouragingly, this suggests that it might not be critical to use very large perturbations in training in order to see positive effects. And that means that more clinically feasible perturbation magnitudes could still be very effective. Thank you for listening to this pitch.